Hey everybody, it's Austin here, and today I've got another update for you guys on both of my quads. Now, we're going to start, just jump right into it with the one that's not here in the garage today, and that would be the LTR. And if you saw the last video, you know that I got the LTR put back together, which was great news. Um, I got the LTR also started and running, which was fantastic. I actually really didn't expect anything to work at all. You know, the whole reason that I tore that quad down in the first place was because I had had a starting issue that started when I adjusted my valves last. So I went through, I did a new battery, I did a starter solenoid, I did a starter, I did some fuses, I went through, I checked connections, I made sure everything was working correctly and in the right place and um, everything seemed fine to me. But then again, I'm not an electrician and there's a lot of different electrical components to that system. So the next logical thing for me was just go, okay, well, if it happened after I adjusted my valves, maybe I didn't adjust my valves correctly. So I pulled everything apart, everything looked good, and then that's when the cam cap issue came about. So I was able to put it all back together. It fired right up, to my surprise. And other than kind of dying on idle after a few minutes, it seemed like everything was fine. I actually rode it up onto the trailer uh, before I hauled it up to my family's place to go test it out where there's some property where I could actually run this thing. In that time, that two and a half hour drive, I guess that the quad decided it didn't feel like being a running quad anymore. And now it won't start again. So, you know, uh, it is what it is. We're gonna move on because I've got a little less than two months until I gotta go racing. I haven't had any seat time because I haven't had anything to ride. And this Yamaha needs to get put back together. So uh, yeah, that's where we're, we're at pretty much. Um, we got to get this thing up and running as fast as possible. And that's actually why I went ahead and did the motor on this without filming it. Now, the first thing I want to say right off the bat is that the best way to describe for me kind of the whole situation with uh, doing all this stuff on YouTube and everything is that I have the knowledge, but I don't necessarily have the experience. And that sometimes creates an issue for me especially when I'm trying to multitask and film. And, you know, I'm talking, I'm thinking about the context of the video, and I'm trying to do motor work. And so with that being the case, I took the first crack at putting this back together. As you know, if you saw the LTR update, I had a little bit of issue with the base gasket where essentially I, um, in extremely cold temperatures, didn't have the solvent evaporate off my glove as quickly as I sort of expected because it usually goes away after a few seconds and that totally ruined the base gasket upon just picking it up. So I had to order a new base gasket, that took a week. Then the base gasket showed up, I was great, ready to go, actually filming a video, and I managed to bend the bottom oil ring. There's, there's three rings for the oil ring, as you probably know, and so there's two that like retain the oil ring and then there's one kind of like actual oil ring, oil ring in the middle. Um, and that bottom one just got out of place as I was putting the cylinder on. Um, and ended up just getting bent enough to where I just didn't trust it. So I ordered another set of rings and then that took another week. Um, so in any case, where we're at now is that I decided it would be in my best interest to put the motor back together and not worry about some of the other, you know, things going on and just trying to really focus on getting the job done itself. And so that's what I did. Um, and like I said, you know, I do have the knowledge to do some how-tos to show you guys how to do some things, to show you my process or my reasoning or something that I've learned. But ultimately, you know, I don't want these videos to ever be like your Bible to doing all this stuff. Um, and so what I want to recommend, because it's actually what I used when I was putting this thing back together, is check out the uh, Partzilla video. And I'll put the link in the description of this video as well. Um, they have an entire YFZ450R top end teardown and rebuild. And it takes you through the process. Very few steps even deviate at all from the manual. Um, but go ahead, you know, if you're trying to do a top end on your YFZ and that's what you were hoping to get out of this channel, definitely check out the Partzilla video. Definitely pick up a service manual, use those two things together. Um, and that's exactly what I did here. And really truthfully, you know, if you're unfamiliar with top ends and kind of want to see what that looks like. Also, the LTR video that I just did, um, you can at least see what that looks like. I mean, it really isn't 
particularly complicated. I would say, you know, the, the most complicated thing or maybe the most kind of how to -y thing that people want to know is how to do valves. And it's actually incredibly simple and you just need a few special tools. And again, um, I don't consider myself the expert to where I would say you need to watch my video over someone else's video. I'm always going to say, you know, go to someone who is truly an expert on this subject. Um, you know, I really share this more of as a, as a way to sort of personally see what I'm working on and kind of share that experience with you guys. And so, um, in any case, the motor's back together. I'm going to go ahead and dedicate the rest of this video to showing you guys sort of all the other things that I still have left to do because there is a ton to do. I've got to do the recluse clutch. I've got to put on the skid plate. I've got to put a lot of stuff back on the quad that's just um, accessory. Um, yeah, those are just the things I can think of off the top of my head. I have an entire list of things that need to get done. So we're going to try and get that done today. I'm going to go ahead and film all that stuff as I go along through the process. Um, and yeah, just to show you guys me getting this quad finished up and ready for the season. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of this quad done. And I'm going to do that part on camera and let you guys come along for the ride. So uh, pretty exciting to get this thing finally wrapped up and ready to go racing. All right, before we actually get to work on this thing, just want to give a quick little preview of the motor now that it's all wrapped up. This thing is looking awesome. That OCP head looks amazing and will hopefully perform even more amazing. And I've also got the intake on. Figured it would probably be a good idea just to throw that on while we had the room and there was a lot of space in here from everything being taken apart. So we went ahead and did that and we are looking really, really good. So super excited to go ahead and start getting all these parts on. First thing I'm going to do is start with the clutch. And we're going to go ahead and throw that new Radius CX clutch in and that should be a pretty straightforward process. All right, we are over here at the workbench. We've got the clutch up here. A few little goodies from the handlebars when I eventually get that all put back on. If you guys remember, this thing was 10 times more chaotic looking than it is now. It's a lot more organized. And that's something I always like to do when I jump into a job like this. So I like to go ahead and grab my tools, everything I'm going to need, starting with some gloves. I really like these gloves. They're actually not the Yamaha ones, but I'm still using the Yamaha box here. And then this is the box over here of gloves. And they are these guys here. They've got some nice grip on them and really good feel. Uh, I really like them. Let me know if you guys prefer gloves or not. I, I personally have switched over from not wearing them to wearing them. I really don't like getting all that stuff on my hands and trying to clean it off later and getting it all over my clothes and face and everything like that. I prefer to just throw something simple on like this, be able to take it off, throw it in the trash. Um, this is also, this is the toolbox that stays in the garage at all times. It's got all my nice tools and they're all usually very organized. This one's not so organized because I ran out of room for all the pliers, but that's what I run over here. And then, you know, things like chemicals. Got a whole electrical box there for doing soldering and wires and things like that. Uh, some of the stuff gets thrown on top in here in the bin. And then this is the go to the races toolbox. I don't even bother organizing it because this is what it ends up looking like by the time you've driven somewhere a couple hours away in the trailer and it's been bouncing around. So these are my cheaper tools and that's what I use um, for that kind of stuff. But uh, it also happens to be that there's a lot of accessible stuff in here. So anyways, enough of the distraction. I'm gonna go ahead and grab, I believe an eight, a 10. I don't remember honestly what the uh, different bolts in the clutch are. So I'm grabbing an eight, 10 and 12. Those are pretty standard sizes. And set those over here. And then I'm gonna grab my impact gun for popping the clutch cover off. And a little bit of an awkward cut probably gonna happen here in the video, but this is what I was talking about before. Trying to do this stuff while filming sometimes is a little bit of a challenge. And you've only got one hand and you're trying to think and talk and do all this at the same time. So there we go. Got the big battery on here. Got our tools. And we're gonna go ahead and leave the clutch on the bench here for now. I'm gonna take this stuff over the quad and pop off that clutch cover and start disassembling the clutch. Now guys, here's something else that I can't recommend enough, and that's this table that I picked up from Harbor Freight. 
Now, about seven-ish years ago when I bought it, it was under $200. I still don't think they're much more than that today. And the really cool thing is it's all hydraulic. It'll lift your quad up to a standing working height. It's enough that it can actually hold the weight of a full quad. And when you've got your quad disassembled like this, you can roll it, move it around in your garage, do whatever you need to do. It's pretty darn awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift this thing the rest of the way up so we can get it a nice height to work on this clutch. Hi right, guys, first things first is we are gonna go ahead and we're gonna pop all these eight millimeter bolts around the clutch cover. We're gonna go ahead and pull that thing off. Now I'm probably going to want to get this brake pedal out of the way, but we'll go ahead and see. Um, sometimes it just really comes down to personal preference for me. You absolutely don't have to do that to do this job. Um, another thing I really wanna go ahead and point out, and I can't stress this enough, if you haven't been paying attention to my other videos, the dirt on this quad is unacceptable for my own standards. I'm really, really unhappy with how dirty it is, but uh, circumstances force me to do what I'm doing now, so we're working with what we got. Um, but please, clean your quad before you're gonna go do any of this kind of stuff. I can't recommend it enough, it's terrible. All right. Okay, we got all of our bolts out of there. So um, if you have a hard time forgetting, you can try and keep your bolts actually in the clutch cover and pull it all out as one piece. And that way they'll stay in each of these holes as you pull it out. But generally what you're gonna find is say, you've got a bolt like this. I know that that's not the right bolt because it goes all the way in. Whereas if I take this long guy right here and put it in, Got that little bit of gap right there, and that's how I know we're good to go. Another thing too that I want to point out, and this is at least the case on the YFZR and maybe on other bikes as well, this bolt right here you can see has got some corrosion on the threads, and that's because it's actually exposed on the back side right here. It's completely open, and this hole goes all the way through. So on a bolt like this, I'm gonna go ahead and clean these threads up before I finish this job. Obviously that's not a concern right now because we're just starting out the process, but um, something you definitely want to pay attention to, any of these bolts where they run clear through the engine and they're exposed to water and dirt on the other side, just make sure you're keeping an eye on these that they're not getting too corroded because if this was a strip out, you're talking about a center crankcase right here and that is bad, bad news. All right, now this clutch should just pop right off without giving me too much trouble at all. Unfortunately, it looks like we have had our gasket separate quite a bit on this one. So we are gonna have to do some work to remove this gasket material before we can go ahead and put this thing back together. But for now, we got our cover off. And on the Yamaha, it's kind of interesting. This is a slipper clutch design. So we've only got three clutch springs as opposed to your standard six that you see on a lot of other bikes, or sometimes five. Uh, these are tens, we're gonna go ahead and pop those off now. We do our best to keep that together. Obviously, drop the spring, but nothing is ever going to go quite perfect. Yeah, we'll find that one later. All right, now we've got a pressure plate, which is kind of a pain in the butt to take out on these because you don't have a lot to grab onto. You guys remember that uh, whole thing about knowledge versus experience at the beginning of this video? This is a perfect example. I've only taken this clutch fully apart once, so I forgot with the slipper design. Gotta go ahead and take these bumpers out. Careful not to actually stab it if you're gonna use something like a pick. Um, looks like, and I don't know if this is the case or not, but it does look like these have kind of a cutout on them to where you can get a flat head in here. But in any case, you're gonna wanna make sure you take those bumpers out before you try and take this pressure plate off or else you're gonna have a hard time doing it like I did. Now, got enough here, we should actually go like this, come along with us. Like I said, we're gonna try and keep that clutch cap in place as best as possible, because that is gonna come in handy here in a minute. And take this pressure plate and just set it off to the side. All right, now we're really into the internals here. So we've got part of our push rod there. I'm gonna set that down. We are gonna need that one later. In addition to that, we're gonna use a magnet to pull out this single ball here, and 
we'll go ahead and take this rod out as well. And then with these parts that we're gonna reuse later, I'm gonna go ahead and set these off to the side on a paper towel in a real organized fashion, something nice and clean, so that we know exactly what we're gonna be doing later when we put it back together. Now the next step in this process is gonna to be to take this nut off. It's not too terribly hard, but it's not as easy said as it's done. So what we need to do is actually find where the tab has been pushed over. In this case, that'd be right here. And we're gonna bend this tab back so that we can get on this nut and turn it. That's why I've left all these clutch internals in because those are gonna help us actually get on this thing and go ahead and get it off. The only issue tends to be with this that um, it's not 100% perfect and that's why you have those clutch holding tools. And I do have one of those, but I'm gonna try this method because I've never actually done it before and I think it might be a little bit of an easier way to go this route. So I've got my two punches here that I'm gonna be using to bend that tab back. I'm gonna start out with this flat one. That's gonna get it off the nut for me, but then because I don't wanna cause any damage and this thing's a little bit sharp, I'm gonna transition over and I'm gonna use this one, which is a round punch, but it's got a completely flat tip on that. That'll bend it the rest of the way back and out of the way for us. Now after this tab has been bent back and you've successfully hammered the back of your hand, I don't know, 10 or 20 times, uh, you're ready to go ahead and take that nut off. Now if you're doing this job for the first time, something you need to be prepared for is the possible disappointment that you don't have a big enough socket in your arsenal to get this job done. On this Yamaha, we're talking about a 30 millimeter, pretty big guy. Um, in a lot of cases, they're gonna be big on these. Um, it's a pretty big shaft to actually get that nut onto, but uh, in any case, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and throw this 30 on and break this thing loose. In my case, I prefer using a bar like this to get this job done. It's a pretty simple tool. Um, an air impact is great too. A impact gun like I was using earlier, that Makita, that thing ain't strong enough to uh, pop these off. So I'm gonna need some serious leverage. That's exactly what this guy's gonna do for me. Okay. Oh yeah. And that is exactly what I feared. In this case, uh, this is not gonna work with this situation. So what we're gonna have to do is pull this clutch pack out and actually use the clutch holder tool to get the rest of the job done. Now there is no right or wrong way to get a clutch pack out, but I prefer using two hook and picks, these 90 degree bends specifically. And I just go ahead and I go into these cutouts on each side. There are a few of them around the clutch. Looks like our clutch isn't quite lined up on the bottom to work 100% correctly for this method, but uh, we're going to go ahead and pull those out. In my case, gravity is not necessarily being my friend right now, but is it ever? I would say this hook and pick method uh, typically works better if you have the quad or uh, even easier, a dirt bike on its side rather than vertical like it is now. But we currently don't have that luxury, so we are gonna go ahead and do it this way. And shouldn't be too much trouble. Just hard to keep stuff from uh, falling off onto the floor. If you were doing a normal clutch, this replacement, you wanna make sure that you keep an eye on the order of these or a reference back to a manual or parts diagram to remember the order of these, but because we're completely replacing this clutch, we're not too terribly concerned about that. And I'm just pulling off these two springs in the back for good measure. Okay, now we can go ahead and bust out this guy. This is your clutch holding tool. It's essentially a set of locking pliers that's specifically designed to fit in here onto this guy. So, what we need to do is open it up enough to where it'll fit on here. All right, so we just went ahead, 
broke that nut off. My left hand is having a field day with hitting with the hammer and now ragging my knuckles up here on the frame. But we are good to go. Pop those off. Give that kind of nice little slide off. Now normally you want to make sure you replace this. Uh, luckily Recluse gives us one specific for theirs. So we're gonna go ahead and use that. And this guy's off and ready for the new internals. Quick little aside here, guys. Uh, a lot of people are always asking about this 2009 to 2010 YFZ 450R clutch basket that's being used in a lot of the newer YFZs. And this is the reason right here. You've got these eight rivets all the way around. And on the back side, there are rubber cushions between the basket and the primary gear and the backing plate. It looks sort of like these guys here in the front. On the newer basket, you would have three rivets and two springs in between. Those cushions are meant to take up some of the force between your transmission, your clutch, and your um, top end. You know, you have forces here that are trying to turn the motor this way, but you might have something on the rear wheel that sort of kicks the counter shaft back here in a different way. And so those are meant to take up a lot of that and absorb that. Um, and the spring design has been failing, whereas this tried and true cushion design has been working great. So I was gonna go ahead and just move along with this process and go ahead and throw these new parts in, but I really wanna do something interesting because I haven't seen this done for the YFZ or any other bike. Here, you have the stock hub, the stock pressure plate. And here, we've got the recluse pressure plate. Underneath is your recluse hub. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this hub, this plate, this hub, this plate, I'm going to go put them on a scale upstairs and I'm going to see what the weight difference is because these feel significantly lighter than these, but I want to know for sure. Okay, so this guy is set to grams. It's been zeroed, so we know we're 100% spot on. And I'm just going to go ahead and throw this guy straight on here. 829 grams. Okay. And now, take deal. I'm going to zero it again. Go ahead and throw the recluse on. 531 grams. So it's a difference of 300 grams. Now I'm I'm going to be honest. I have no idea what that means in terms of pounds or ounces or any other measurement of weight, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and throw that number up on the screen now, and uh, to me, I mean, it seems like a significant difference, but I guess we're going to find out. Okay, I just got down here to the garage, and I weighed these upstairs. I did a little bit of math. It looks like it's about three quarters of a pound difference. You guys will know before I do, but uh, that's pretty significant because that is rotating mass inside the motor, so that is, uh, that's pretty cool. Pretty excited about that. Now, all we need to do is get this stuff all put back together. So I'm gonna take these recluse parts, I'm gonna read through the instructions and we'll get started on this process here. All right guys, the first step is pretty darn simple. You just need to throw this guy in on the splines and you're good to go. Make sure it's fully seated back there and then we're gonna grab our washer and put it on. This is your new tab washer. You wanna make sure that the two vent portions here and here Go into these two holes, just like so. Then we're gonna grab our nut and throw that guy back on. And the next step, according to Recluse, I'm gonna go ahead and follow their instructions on this one, rather than using the tool, is to set this bike on the ground, place it in the highest gear, and then hold the rear brake down. And that should prevent it from being able to spin while we tighten that nut down. I'm not gonna use this because this is made for an OEM inner hub and these lobes, while they didn't fit great in the OEM Yamaha, they're gonna fit a whole lot worse in the Recluse, which is not the same design. We got the quad on the ground. Got our torque wrench, which is set to 50 foot-pounds per Recluse's instruction. And I'm gonna go ahead and stand on the rear brake. Get this job done. See you guys in a bit. Okay, we are all tightened down and ready to go. Going to adjust the camera. 
So we can do the next step in the process here, which is to bend those tabs in the washer. And they recommend using a set of channel lock pliers. Which should get it done. There we go. A little bit of fighting, a little bit of slipping, but we're good to go. Nothing got hurt in the process. Next in this process is the clutch pack. So we need to soak the clutch pack in oil for five minutes. Now, in some cases, you're gonna to wanna to soak your clutch packs for say 24 hours. But in the case of Recluse, this is all they want you to do. So that's what we're gonna follow. Um, while those are soaking, we're gonna go ahead and put in our sleeves, which is going to help our basket last even longer. All right, so as I mentioned, Recluse gives you these. And these sleeves are gonna go into each of these for our clutch basket. It's also important to note that the tabs right here are facing down into the basket, like so. We've got some marinated goodness right here. These guys are all soaked up in some Maxima fully non-synthetic uh, 10W40. And we've got our discs ready to go. So the order for the YFZ is gonna start with a disc, then the EXP, and then another disc. And then we're just gonna alternate between discs and fibers from there on out. So go ahead and get this guy on. Something I just did just now is I made sure to check that this guy isn't directional, and it's not, but uh, just wanted to be 100% certain before I went any further in the process that everything was correct here. So according to Recluse, the next step is to take our pressure plate with three of the springs and put it on here. Then we're going to take our three socket head five mil screws and get them started here. Now I'm using a T-handle with an Allen key socket to do this. In most cases, always try and start by hand, but you've got to actually push on this hard enough to compress these springs to go to grab threads. And it's, you can't really turn this with your hand because it's in this uh, hole here. So that's what we're using. Now notice these first two that I put on, I haven't put on tight all the way. They're only partially on. And I'm going to tighten these down evenly. Since I've got them most of the way there. So according to Recluse, I'm going to push this pin down. Loosen it a quarter turn and slowly release it, which will release our adjuster ring right here. Then we're going to use the notches in the adjustment ring. We're going to turn it counterclockwise until it comes to a stop against the pressure plate itself.
according to Recluse, was the starting point for this adjustment. And now we can go ahead and take our pressure plate back off. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the Sharpie that has been supplied by Recluse. We're gonna pick one of these circles here. We're gonna draw a line that goes here onto the inner hub. Make sure that's really well defined. We're gonna go back to our screwdriver here. And using these notches, we're going to take this and turn it one full turn. Until we reach that mark again. Then we're gonna take it three additional circles to the mark here. So one, two, three. All counterclockwise. Then we take the turn the pin, we turn the head so it's facing this way here. And we're gonna push it in, turn it quarter turn and release. And now we are locked in place. Now we're going to go ahead, we're going to throw in the throwout assembly and we're going to go ahead and throw in our pressure plate and we should be in the home stretch. So if you remember our throwout looked like this initially. Make sure we get that in there correctly. Then, got the ball, it goes in the end. Finally, this guy, which doesn't have a washer or anything like that, but it does have a bearing on the end of it. Push that in, make sure it's all working correctly. And now it's pressure plate time. So, we'll go ahead and get this lined up. It's a lot easier if you're not looking at it from my angle. There we go. And then we will take our springs, put those guys in. So we've got three red springs and three blue springs. They are different stiffness. And we're gonna go ahead and stagger those. Now Recluse does offer different stiffness of springs. This is what comes with the YFC kit. And that's what we're gonna go ahead and start out with. I have a feeling their recommendation is going to be pretty spot on. Hopefully you won't make my mistake and drop one of these nice little inserts on the floor. Ah, oh, like nothing ever happened. Alright. Now we'll go ahead, throw in the bolts. One at a time. And again, try not to throw them on the floor. Now, same as before, we're going to get these started with our T-handle. Be careful to push hard enough to get it to engage. While safely ensuring you're not doing any harm. And finally, without these being completely tightened down, we're going to take our torque wrench and torque these two 9-foot pans. You guys may remember earlier in the video when I lowered this thing on the ground and put the brake on. Well, I didn't want to do that again for torquing these guys down, so even better, I went ahead and put a ratchet strap on the brake down to the bottom of the stand. And I will clean that oil up later. But anyways, that is how I'm going to go ahead and do this. So now, let's get these guys to 9-foot pans. As you can see, these guys are all down to nine foot pounds. They're looking good to go. And the last thing to do is clean up that gasket service and then we'll throw on our clutch cover. All right, now for arguably the most important part of this clutch install. This is the part that I know 
you guys spent your money on. This is why you spend a thousand dollars for a clutch. So you can put this on right here and let everyone know just how awesome your machine is. Uh, but in any case, seriously, uh, pretty awesome trick piece from Recluse. And uh, you gotta love it. So I'll go ahead and throw these bolts in. Right. Now they're all started by hand. I'm gonna go ahead and just lightly snug them with the impact. And last, but arguably most important, I'm gonna torque all of these to seven foot pounds. And since technically the final step in this is to adjust your clutch lever, I need to go ahead and put the handlebars on now. All right, there it is. Um, definitely not set up for my liking yet. This lever is way low and this one is way high and it's kind of wacky, but um, that's fine because until I actually get this on the ground and get the ability to play with it and adjust it and set it up, I'm not really gonna know what I want with any of these. Um, but the bars are on so we can at least work on all that. It looks like my free play really didn't change hardly at all with the install of the recluse. So let's see here. Yeah, we're pretty much good to go. Clutch feels really good. Clutch feels really soft. Um, everything else good to go. I got new grips, everything like that. So only thing that I need to do at that point is, like I said, get it on the ground, adjust it for what I like. And uh, we'll move on to put more of this quad together. Well, we are in the home stretch. Um, I've got to throw the gas tank on and a few little bits and pieces. Um, and then for the final reveal on this quad, you guys are going to have to stay tuned for the next video because uh, that's when I'll have done all the little cosmetic touch-ups and things like that, and uh, gotten all the odds and ends put on. Um, I've got new plastics, new graphics. Uh, I've got to throw the skid plate on, you know, different things like that. But this quad is basically pretty much done. Um, I've got to do the free play gain in the clutch. That goes with the new recluse setup, but I can't do that until the quad's idling and the quad hasn't been broken in and it hasn't been dynoed. So can't do that on this video. Um, but that is kind of the next step. Get this thing all wrapped up and ready to go. And then we're going to take it down to OCP and have the Vortex set up by Jeff on his dyno. So that is uh, pretty much where we're at. And that's where you guys are going to pick up next time is uh, me taking this thing down there and getting it all sorted. So um, yeah, we're, uh, we're really pretty close now to being ready to get out and start riding this. And uh, can't wait to tell you guys uh, all about what I think about the new power, the new clutch, uh, just everything that we've done to this to get it ready for 2021. So stay tuned for that and uh, thanks for watching and I'll leave you guys with a little montage here, a little fast forward action of me putting this last little bit on.